So I am here at Storm FM and I've got Josh here with me all from across the pond. Josh, how you doing, buddy? Great. Thanks. To, uh, thanks for having me on. Appreciate yeah, it. man. I mean, it's been a while since we last spoke. And last time we spoke, we spoke about, you know, Bitcoins and cryptocurrency. And we touched very briefly on AI technology. And I kind of wanted to talk about that because since that last conversation, AI has just kind of exploded. Um, the advancements seem to be going through the roof. What with the guy from Google uh, resigning and stuff like that. So I just kind of wondered, you know, because you were sort of working on some AI programs, developing some art and, you know, you'd done some drawings and that. I mean, what's your kind of thoughts on the old AI stuff? Oh, wow. Well, it's really exploded in the last three plus months or so it's it's really taken a revolutionary turn and we're seeing that in every business uh every industry is going to be heavily affected by this uh actually just saw an article that wendy's the fast food restaurant uh is going to be replacing all of their drive through um workers that take orders with ai displacing uh several million jobs in the upcoming uh months whoa man that's just unbelievable isn't it i mean that's just it, it's i guess they've been developing it for years but for us to see the development so quick because everyone's just took their eye off the ball yeah um you know i think we can contribute a lot of this progress not just um to one you know like every company is is integrating it now but i want to say that um specifically open ai um that company it originally started as a nonprofit that um, actually Elon Musk had donated, I want to say, 10 or $100 million to, to them as a nonprofit to help advocate for their, uh, their goals of creating like an open source AI that would be regulatable and, uh, you know, like, because a, a lot of these people in this industry are scared of what it can do if left unchecked. Mm. And uh, so Elon Musk invested heavily or not invested because he it was a donation to a nonprofit. And uh, after they got that money, uh, they then released their Dolly, the image generation uh, platform. And now they have a program called Chat GPT. And that is what has been basically revolutionizing the entire industry. Uh, they've since privatized as a for-profit company and um there was a lot of outcry from people that you know said well i gave you know millions of dollars to you as a non-profit and now you're a for-profit and i don't have anything to show for it so there's a little bit of outcry um from some of those initial investors or uh philanthropists that were trying to do it as an open source thing and then it's kind of uh spit in the face when they turn mm -hmm. it for a profit uh, I believe that they specifically partnered with either Microsoft, uh, I believe, and had some insane offer where they got like like a billion or a few billion dollars and for 49% of the company, they, they just wanted as much as they could. And um, but yeah, it, it uh, the chat GPT stands for like generative um, text, basically, where it can understand the nuance of our human talk or text and generate very coherent responses um, in response to any prompt or question uh, that you might have for it. And, um, you know, it, it's like I mentioned with Wendy's at its base, like, oh, it can take a fast food order, but it can also outperform medical doctors and diagnosing patients and writing code better than, software developers and generating business plans and it, it can do pretty much everything better than us at this point and it's just in its initial release uh, i mean that's kind of mind-blowing really because it it makes you kind of think will it make me think where does that leave us as a race as people for jobs for where do we fit in to that whole process because eventually ai will be running the planet and we will just be people that go around and virtually do nothing <laughs> uh one of the best questions we can ask right now is where do we fit in into an ai world where they're doing all of the thinking and all of the work for us. Um, 
I um, actually had an interesting conversation with somebody um, about the movie The Matrix, the original yeah. film. Yeah. And there's a very famous scene where um, Agent Smith has captured Morpheus. Yeah. And he's injected him with some sort of serum to try and turn him. And uh, Neo is on a um, mission to rescue him. And before he does, there's a monologue that Agent Smith goes on uh, when talking to Morpheus. And he specifically brings up, um, like, human history. He's, like, talking about the original um, origins of the Matrix and the first iterations they had were failures and a lot of interesting things. But ultimately, there's one line in that movie that was a very surreal awakening um, and reminder for me. Uh, he basically said, you know, we've created this uh, this world in the early 21st century here. Um, and this is the pinnacle of your civilization. And then he clarifies saying, and I say your civilization, because as soon as you let us think for you, it became our civilization. And that, yeah. That, that that's an interesting context there, isn't it? Because it, I mean, I've seen that in the news that the guy um, who works for Google, he's recently resigned and just said, look, this is just, I don't want no part of this because this will just affect everything, whether the media's hyped that up or not. But I guess, you know, people watching things like uh, Terminator, Skynet becoming self sort of like sufficient and sentient and making all of these decisions for us. Eventually, they will be telling us this is what's best for you and you need to listen to us. Right. But I, I think it's going to be a gradual slip out of our fingers. We're already seeing it with text messages. You know, you go to write something and it says, Oh, that. Yep. here's three options of words that you're probably, and, and you know, it's, it's right. 90 something percent of the time. And now even with email, you, you write something in Gmail, you're like, Oh, thanks. And then it has the rest of the email basically. Yeah. Where you saying the person's name and some nice uh, words. And, um, you know, there's already people that have plugins and uh, software that are just generating emails and going back and forth. And it's just scary because, you know, these are real decisions that affect the real world sometimes. Mm. Yeah. We're kind of taking our hands off the wheel. And for now, it, it's it's a novelty, you know, it, it's a nice luxury. But at what point are we just going to say, oh, automate all my emails? And don't even, I'm not even going to read them and mm -hmm. AI is going to respond back. And at what point is it going to do something irreversible? Yeah. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because at a moment, as you said there, it is very novelty for us because, you know, we can type something in and it generates a wonderful picture for us. And you kind of think if we're getting that kind of AI now, what are the military using or what are they got in process? Because they're drip feeding okay. us. Oh yeah, no. Um, you know, it brings up a good point. If uh, this um, public company that created these programs did it with just a, a few million or hundred million dollars, imagine what these private governments—Russia, the U.S., China—you name it—they have untold billions or trillions of dollars that they've not just been putting in now, but have been investing in for the last hundred plus years, respectively, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's terrifying. And um, actually, that, that that does bring me to another point of um, it, this is an interesting conspiracy that I wanted to share. Mm. Um, and it goes by the name, if you uh, Google it, called Project Bluebeam. Uh, yes, I've, I've heard of Project Bluebeam. Okay, okay. Um, well, just uh, what I wanted to say about it, though, is it, it's almost surreal. I'm not sure if you were familiar with... Um, one of the Marvel movies, the Spider-Man Far From Home, if you're if you've ever. No, I'm not. No. Well, well just uh, it's really not too important, but there's a um, the bad guy, the protagonist. Um, yeah, the bad guy in that movie is Mysterio, who appears to be a good guy. Um, and he appears to have all these powers. 
And ultimately, by the end of the movie, you find out he doesn't have any powers or abilities other than he controls advanced hologram technology. And so he put on these amazing displays of power, uh, but it was all just a hologram. And um, I feel like that's very similar to the concept behind Project Bluebeam in that mm. the faking of or distraction of uh, extraterrestrial or alien or mystical type events could be just orchestrated by powers that be to, you know, distract from whatever they don't want you looking at. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've done a lot of looking into that project blue beam and it's just, I mean, people say, you know, oh, it could that happen? But if you look at Japan and stuff where you go over there and just coming out of like department stores, you've got wows and stuff that are just literally diving out into thin air and you can see people ducking from underneath because it looks so real. Now that's stuff that we're privy to moving right. forwards, moving forwards. I mean, um, and I'm always interested in the new movies that are coming out, like on Amazon Prime and film, things like that. And being a filmmaker myself, you always know that, well, I've got a theory that, you know, if you're looking at stuff and they're talking about going into your memories and bringing your memories at the forefront and letting you travel back in your memory and things like that, that technology is there. They're just drip feeding us through the media, through your television, just to get you used to it. So when it starts coming out, it becomes familiar because TV, television programming guide, that's kind of my theory. I mean, I'm a movie maker, so I love it, but I definitely think that that is massive in terms of getting us ready for new technology because, you know, we, yeah. I mean, I mean, look at um, artificial intelligence with Steven Spielberg. I mean, that movie is just ancient and yet it's all coming true now. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot of movies you can rewatch today. Uh, Do sex machina, um, for example, is, is a, you know, at what point, is your AI girlfriend going to murder you and take off? <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about yourself? Are you using any any AI currently, uh, Josh? Because I know you was using, or you were, you know, tinkering with a couple of programs at the time. Are, are you looking at anything? Yeah, um, I've actually been um, using the Chat GPT, the text based one. Uh, I use it probably every single day of my life at this point. Um, I'm actually paying for the pro subscription to enable me to have um, some newer and beta features that aren't available to the free users. Um, and that means that um, or the free users get chat GPT 3.5. And I have access to 4.0, which is slower, but more accurate and knowledgeable um, and gives better quality content. Um, and, and and right, for that, sorry, and for that, for the listeners, can you explain what is that program? What's it used for? Uh, so yeah, Chat GPT is a web based, like you just go into your browser and you you type in OpenAI Chat GPT or whatever they have their link as, and you log in. Uh, and once you're logged in, it um, you have uh, they call them chats where it can segregate conversations with AI so that it doesn't know what your other conversations are about. Right. Um, and well, this is, can be helpful instead of just one giant conversation you're having where, you know, or the point is whatever you've said to it in a said conversation or chat, it will be able to reference in that chat. So if at the beginning of the chat, I'm like, this is my name, address, information, and here's about me and all this stuff. And then a week later, uh, you know, in this conversation, I'm like, Oh, can you give me a summary of me? It can go back to that very first message and know and depicts all that information. So basically it's a, it's a learning AI. Basically you're educating it about yourself. And or if you're talking to it, eventually it will be like an, a, a personal assistant type. Yeah. And there's already, um, a, well, let me back it up a bit by saying that there's a, what's called an API, which means that developers or other programmers can uh, call um, and use the website's ability, like the same thing that you would do on the website, and put it into their custom application or code or whatever they want to do. Uh, it does cost them money, but the, their whole idea is... Um, they're also charging for the services they're providing. Right. And then that 
is what it costs them to use the API. Um, I mean, so there's oh, sorry, sorry uh, no, no, sorry, I'll cut in. Go on, buddy. Okay, well, I was gonna say there's already dozens of apps. Everybody and their brother is putting out an app that basically has a link to this API. So you're essentially just using this one AI tool, but it's now branched out into a million different apps and people are using it for different purposes. Um, and that's the thing. You can make it be an assistant. You can make it be a girlfriend. You can make it be a therapist, a doctor, whatever you want it to be. It, it, will, be. And it will be. And it will be better than the human equivalent in every. Uh, a lot of the people in the industry that I'm in are really starting to get sort of nervous because the AI is now, I know that they're looking at AI script writing. So basically you won't need a script writer. You'll just well, put in the dynamics and it will type a script for you. You might, I don't know if you've heard, there's actually a strike going on. Yeah. Writer America here. Um, and that's one of the things that they're fighting for is they want to make it an ironclad thing in their, in their thing saying AI will not replace us. You will not use AI to et cetera. And that's what they're fighting for. And it's uh, scary that the entertainment industry is fighting for technology rights, but mm. here we are. Uh, uh, yeah. Because the, I've, I've read that Marvel was saying that within the next five years, all of their movies will be um, AI generated that they'll just pay the artists for their image. And eventually they won't even need to use an artist's image. The AI will create that image for that specific person. So basically they'll own the rights to that character. So it, it's a little bit scarier than even that. Um, we, we now have, there's some variations to chat GPT that can be used just to render 3d objects in like a, um, like a CGI or digital um, way. And there's already several um, integrations of this with uh, people that develop video games, for example, use this uh, Unreal Engine. And they have integrated AI into that where it just basically, you have like an open grid of the world and then you can just type in, it's a swampland and the entire world changes. Or you can say, oh, it's a, futuristic cyber city instantly changes to that um where that would have taken weeks months with a, many different developers all coding and changing the skin and stuff is now just a few words on the keyboard away um and it's actually already becoming uh, i've already seen several examples of ai generated uh, advertisement videos uh, they're they're mostly jokes right now but we're we're not far from just being able to type in a few words. Uh, for example, you could type in create a new season for Game of Thrones. And bam, entire 10 episodes, hour long each, all perfect with the exact, all the characters. And like, we're, we're not there yet. I'm just saying like, that's where we're about to be in that's terms of simplicity of creating entertainment. That's where we will be, yeah. I mean, I know that lots of people in the industry are, are really nervous. Um, a friend of mine's a camera operator, and he went to a job in London in the studio. Normally, you'd have to set the cameras up, work with the other camera people. But he said he, he literally walked in. All the cameras were online. It was all ready for uh, AI, and all he had to do was sit and press a button. <laughs> yeah. And he pressed the button, and he said the autofocus, when it came round, was perfect you normally you'd need a focus puller it was there it, i mean it, the face recognition as soon as it had it and he just said it asked them you know i'm not moaning because i'm getting paid but what am i doing here and i think it all boiled down to at this precise moment union i think that's the only reason why he was there because he was a, because they can say to the unions i'm using a real person even though they're cutting back with the ai once they break that then I think we, as you say, we'll see all of that. I mean, we're, we're kind of moving towards the, you know, Star Trek kind of, you know, computer, you know, Earl Grey tea or the holodecks where you're actually walking in and you tell it 20th century oh. clothes, bang, we're there. Yeah. I, like it's, and, and like we mentioned before, like this is just what the public has access to. So it's almost imaginable what these government or private, uh, places or just you know what's behind doors at google or any of these other places you know with 
the vast amounts of technology, wealth, and energy at their disposal, they can, it's terrifying. Um, and if we're also in that same fight for the quantum computing, which yeah. as we talked about in our last one, but like now that AI is here, it's going to um, speed up our ability to create uh, quantum and, and perfect it. And then again, that's a whole nother, um, you know, uh, jar of worms, whatever you call it. That's, that's kind of, so, so in, in, in respect of like the futuristic stuff we're watching on TV with time travel, time warps, different universes, multiple universes, all of that kind of stuff, realistically, with this AI technology and this quantum, we're kind of getting to that futuristic element because, uh, you know, if, if you can tell AI, we want to travel to Mars, the velocity is that we need to do is this, 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 the subject is this, this, and this eventually it will be able to just create that rocket, build it. And instead of sending humans there, it will just send artificial intelligence. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely where we're headed. And, you know, I, I feel like with a lot of pop culture and media coming out today, it's almost like they're prepping us for um, like multiverse or different advanced things where they're, they're bringing it in as, you know, cartoons or sci-fi at first, but it's like we're inching ever so closer to reality here. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's, I mean, it's mind-blowing to the point of, are we ready for that? Can we keep up with that? I mean, or will it just evolve as the new generations go through? But can we keep up with that? I mean, aliens, they're saying about, you know, they're getting ready to announce, um, you know, they keep saying that they're getting ready for disclosure. They're going to announce extraterrestrials, but actually we've just created one. We've got one here. It's, it's it. living among us, among us. Um, yeah. Um, you know, the, the scary thing um, with all of this is who is going to be around to experience it? Because as, as we're seeing, all the jobs are being disappearing. Uh, the, the few people that have this, technology power and wealth they're going to be okay for the most part but what about the other 99 percent mm -hmm. like i said you know it's starting with wendy's then it's going to be the film industry then you know it's and we're going to have to have a more global conversation at some point in terms of what do we as a society do when there's no jobs and some uh, people had mentioned um, or solutions to this was a form of like universal basic income or basically some form of uh, moneyless uh, type of society in terms of, uh, I guess, a little bit leaning towards socialism in some way, but not really it, or I guess this would be um, in a world where there's no scarcity for resources, like there would be an abundance of food, energy, water, clothes, products of all sorts, because AI would be able to create it, distribute it and give it availability to all of us in such a way that there wouldn't be a need for capitalism or money because everything is just dirt cheap and Obviously, that's going to be messy to navigate, considering the entire world is running on money mm. right now. You know, ironically, somehow the world is in debt, trillions of dollars. So it's like maybe our whole system isn't working to begin with. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just trying to say, you know, we're, we're going to have to figure out if we can live in, I guess, like a utopian age where AI saves us. You know, I don't know how we're going to get there exactly, but I'm just saying hypothetically, when we get there, people are going to have to reconsider what they do with their time in terms of if you don't need to be compensated or you don't need money to live, you have all your food, energy, technology provided for you and you can go off planet or log into the matrix, virtual reality, whatever you want to do, what will you want to do with your time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's it's. It's interesting, isn't it? it it's uh, man. It, it's it's gonna get to, it's gonna get to a point that's gonna be really interesting. I mean, to the point where, as you say, if you've got a point where you've got everything, 
what do you do? What do you want? I mean, what, you know, do you suddenly, does the governments get everybody to study and you contribute in some sort of way? But if you've got AI there, you can't keep up with it. So educating you is pointless. Yeah, that there, it would be for personal enrichment, not for like progressive yep. anything, because it would be able to do it. Uh, I do want to mention, though, that there was uh, one television series that I believe covered this topic very well. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, the creator of uh, Family Guy. And, oh, um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put out a television series recently called The Orville, which is like a Star Trek uh, type of show. But he really covers a lot of deeper uh, philosophical type scenarios. And in, in their TV show, it takes place in the year like 2500. And they already live in a moneyless society. And they have you know, like you said, the hollow deck or a synthesizer can just print out food or experience whatever you want. And in the show, they explored those topics like, you know, why are you doing these jobs as a captain or security officer or cook or whatever you're doing? Why are you doing it? Because you clearly can just sit at home and whatever. And they said, uh, or their nuance on it was, um, you do it because you want to be the best at whatever you're doing like for, for the pride and joy. And that, and that's, and then that's the currency in that society in terms of like, Oh, I'm accomplished by doing this, that and contributing to society, not for money, but because I want to do this. This is what I'm passionate about. And this is what I want to do. And the society like um, coddles that type of uh, sentiment and they are flourishing in such way. And they even took it a step further and said, you know, how did um, people react when they first had this available to them? And uh, they even said, you know, there was a lot of people that uh, they had came from a world where they were working their whole lives. And some of them uh, took this opportunity to just do nothing. They had a lot of joy in just being retired, vacation, you know, just enjoying doing nothing. And then the, the next generations that come after that don't want to sit and do nothing because that's not attractive to them. They they don't understand the hardship that a society like us is in and would then seek to enrich themselves in their lives by contributing, like I said, by picking whatever role or uh, job or, you know, if you want to be the best painter or mm. whatever do you know you'll have the ability to do that and society will reward you and you'll be um revered in society for your contributions even though money is not um, a factor well well it's going to be an interesting one um josh and uh just just before we sort of end this interview i mean if anybody wants to look into any ai or anything can you give them any sort of websites or anything that might be ideal for them to look at uh, yeah, again, uh, open AI, if you just type that into Google is probably your best bet for um, they're, they're the leader of, of, of all of this. And like I said, all of the other programs and AIs and software you're seeing are pretty much a off branch of, um, of their technology. Um, other places, um, Microsoft and Google and uh, these other ones, they, Bing, for example, now has an AI assistant but it's garbage. Uh, you basically, <laughs> no, I, I'm serious. I, 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 at first was, I, I tried it out and I was like, it basically uses like the web search to refine its answers. And it gives uh. you like web answers, but in an AI like summary way. And if I ask it something that I'm like, oh, how do you do X? And it says, oh, well, this is how you do Y. And I'm like, well, that's not what I asked for. It goes, okay, bye. And then just ends the conversation. <laughs> So it's just like it just quit <laughs> every five seconds in, in these conversations. It's honestly pretty embarrassing, which is probably why that um CEO stepped down or, or that 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 professional stepped down. Um and then honestly, uh, just searching AI or anything in your app store or Google Play Store or search engine, you, you're gonna see 
literally hundreds of people are, are putting out software and using this and uh, it, it can be used for everything. Uh, there's, there's people that are using it for, um, uh, for coding, like for software development, you say, Oh, I, I want to write a web page or a software that can do this or that. And it just outputs it in two seconds and you just copy and paste it into your thing and bam, you, you've created a code. You, uh, like I said, there's therapists, there's girlfriends, there's uh, doctors, uh, lawyers, pretty much any service you, you could look for. There's an AI equivalent. Um, and yeah, so just, just Google search that. And, um, and do you mind if I give myself a, a quick plug? At plug yourself all day long, my friend. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I cover some uh, topics. I, I, I just recently launched a YouTube channel. Uh, it's under the title um, Code and Courage, the Abrams Initiative. Um, and I cover a lot of different topics in terms of uh, philosophy, AI, music, and uh, law and other advocacy projects that I'm working on. So um, feel free to check me out. And uh you know that that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, yep. do you want to um do you want to plug that once more your YouTube channel because there could have been a bit of a snag there in the in the time frame. So oh. do you want to do that again? Yep. Yeah, um. So yeah, my YouTube channel. I just launched it like a week or two ago. It's called um, Code and Courage: The Abrams in Initiative. Um and Again, I, I, I'm putting out a lot of content. I'm, I'm trying to cover some of this. I'll probably be able to upload our conversation here at, under the podcast section a little later. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting next, uh, I'd even say before the year's over, we're probably going to have you know, another giant revolution in the AI or various industries. So you know, stay tuned. Well, Josh, as always, a pleasure for coming on, my friend. And uh, I'll keep in touch and uh, come back on again. I'd love to come back on and talk about your YouTube channel, what's going on, your development for it in the future, and how it's progressing. And if you're using AI for it, I'd love to cut for you to come back on yep. in, a, in a couple of weeks or something. I'd love to talk about that whenever you're ready. So thanks for having me on. Hey, lovely, my friend. Thanks very much. You keep safe. Huh? See you soon. See you later, Bye. brother.